Rudolf Bolarski was born in Pennsylvania in the year 1900, the son of Polish immigrants. Although Bolarski had to quit school when he was 12 to work in the coal mines, he studied mail order art courses at night. At the age of 22, he made it to Brooklyn, where he studied at the Pratt Institute, staying on to teach there after he graduated. By the 1930s, Bolarski was a popular cover artist in the pulp magazine industry, working in a number of different genres. He did the covers for science fiction magazines, for detective magazines, adventure magazines, and so on. Now, what exactly were the pulps? These were inexpensive magazines printed on cheap paper made from wood pulp, hence the name. Prior to the Second World War, these were the primary source of popular fiction in the United States. Many pulps featured stories from specific genres, such as mystery or science fiction. Often, they featured the continuing adventures of a specific character. For instance, Bilarski painted many of the covers for The Phantom Detective. This was a magazine about a rich guy who served as a fighter pilot during World War I. Bored with the life of a playboy after the war ended, he adopted a masked identity and trained himself to be a master detective. He then fought crime as a vigilante. Bilarski's atmospheric covers helped make the Phantom Detective a popular pulp hero throughout the 1930s and into the 1940s. Now keep in mind that dozens of pulps reached the newsstands each week, so the cover illustration was a major selling point, and a good cover could make or break a magazine. Another character Bilarski worked with was the Black Bat. Now this character was a former district attorney who had been blinded by a criminal. When he regained his eyesight, he kept this a secret from everyone but a few close friends, and he secretly fought crime as the bat Black Bat. Once again, Bilarski's striking covers helped sell the character to the reading public. Bilarski also produced covers for war story magazines. Now popes that featured tales set in the First World War were very popular during the 1930s because they came with a built-in setting that didn't have to be explained to the readers. We already knew who the good guys were and who the bad guys were, so the writer of a story could jump right into the story without having to do a lot of exposition. Now, many of the war pulps involved the air war. The reading public in the 1930s was particularly eager to read stories about pilots and airplanes. Remember that at the time, airplanes were still relatively new. It had only been three decades since the Wright brothers made the first powered flight. World War I had been the first time airplanes had been used as weapons of war in any significant way. And by the 1930s, there were commercial airlines, but the average person still traveled by bus or train. Most people had never been on an airplane, and they thought it was unlikely that they would ever do so. Planes, therefore, held a romantic appeal, something that was now a reality, but still out of reach for the average person. Bolarski's skill in portraying the romance and the danger inherent in these stories made him the go-to guy for such illustrations. His composition skills, notably his tendency to zoom in tightly uh, on pilots and passengers to highlight the feeling of tension, were particularly fitting to the subject matter. When the Second World War began, the pulps began to publish stories set during that war, and Bolarski's covers reflected this. One particularly interesting aviation adventure book had the unlikely title of Terence X. O'Leary's Warbirds, and here are two of Bolarski's covers for that book. Now, O'Leary was a character who had been featured as a soldier fighting in the First World War in a number of novelettes published in the pulps. Now, his popularity led the publishers to give him his own title. O'Leary now led a squadron of crack pilots. In a bizarre twist, he no longer fought the Germans in World War I, but he defended the United States against attacks by ancient mummies and undersea kingdoms. It was a very science fiction oriented magazine. When the United States entered the Second World War, Bilarski was too old for military service. Instead, he joined the USO, and he drew portraits of wounded soldiers. After the war, pulp magazines were rapidly being replaced as a source of new fiction by paperback novels. Bilarski dived into this market, and he became the primary cover artist for the publishing firm Popular House until the early 1950s. He also worked for men's adventure magazines, providing covers and interior art. In 1956, Bolarski began working as a correspondence art instructor at the famous artist school. He retired in 1972, and he died in 1983. Frederick Blakesley was another go-to artist for aviation adventure stories. Blakesley was born in 1898, 
He studied art at the Albright Art School, and he worked in the drafting department of the Curtis Airplane Factory from 1915 to 1920. Later, he studied at the Pratt Institute. It was, it was actually Rudolf Bolarski who helped Blakesley get his first cover assignments in the pulps. Before long, Blakesley made a name for himself as a as cover artist for railroad pulps and then for aviation pulps. In 1933, the publisher's popular publications began publishing G8 and his Battle Aces, which would run for 110 issues. Blakesley would be the cover artist throughout the run. Now, G8 was an ace fighter pilot and a spy during the First World War. Along with his two sidekicks, he fought against a never-ending series of bizarre threats to the Allied armed forces. Each issue came about in an interesting way. Blakesley would create a cover that featured a creepy and weird danger. And then write, the writer, Robert Hogan, would write a story that fit that image. This resulted in a long series of strange but exciting war stories in which the intrepid G8 would fight zombies, tiger men, cavemen, invisible airplanes, giant bugs, mythological creatures come to life, and giant eagles, along with other strange creations, all made by Germany's seemingly endless supply of mad scientists. Now, Blakesley also did the covers for Dusty Airs and his Battle Birds, in which yet another brave pilot protected the United States. Set in the near future, Dusty Airs defended the country against an evil empire known as the Black Invaders. Now, during World War II, Blakesley served in the Coast Guard Reserve. After the war, when the pulp market was dying out, Blakesley found work as an industrial draftsman. This was valuable and respectful work that he did until his retirement in 1963. But fans of his work can't help but be disappointed that he no longer gave us skeletons with death rays. Now the library does have a book featuring Rudolf Bolarski's work. And we also have the book Pulp Culture, which features the work of many pulp artists, including Bolarski and Frederick Blakesley. Uh, please feel free to ask for them at the circulation desk.